There may be a couple of reasons why you would want to update the software in your EFI system. Sometimes you're just trying to update the handheld itself because you purchased a new ECU to mount to your throttle body. Today we're going to show you how to update the software in the handheld as well as load that software over to the EFI system so you can be running the latest version of software. The most important thing to start off with is knowing which EFI system you have and which handheld you have. We have these newer type handhelds that have a wire hanging off the bottom. On the side of them, there may be two dots on this edge. If there's two dots, you want to notify our tech support that you have those two dots on it. Otherwise, it doesn't have it. On the older style handhelds that have the two plugs on the top, the way we identify the two, uh, two types there is there's a little joystick to the right of the screen. Does that joystick have white arrows around it? If there is, let the techs know that as well. So in our case, this handheld does not have those two dots and we got a 30,003 Go Street 400 horsepower system. So let's go and update the software to the latest version here. So the first thing that we're going to do with our handheld is we're going to go down to the bottom of the main menu to handheld software mode selection. It's going to give us three options. The very first one, open USB mass storage, is the one we're, we want to select. When we select it, the screen will say USB storage mode and the handheld should connect to our laptop. If the file doesn't pop open for you, what you'll want to do is you'll want to go into the file explorer find the drive that it associates itself as. So it'll be usually something like a drive D or a drive E. In our case, it's on drive H. I have a lot of stuff connected to the computer, so that's why it's so far down. But from here, what's gonna happen is, is you're gonna contact the tech support team. You're gonna tell them which handheld you have, which EFI system you have, and that you want the latest software. They're gonna email it to you uh, if the file's too large, they're gonna use a compression software to zip it up and send it through something like Dropbox. Um, at that point, you'll take your file, drag it onto the desktop of your computer, and you have to extract it. It'll be like a little uh, compressed file that'll have like a stack of books with a belt on it. What you can use is a decompression utility. I personally use WinRAR, so W-I-N-R-A-R. -R. You can download it for free online. There's other programs as well that is called WinZip, just Z-I-P. But if you use these utilities, you can open up the file. I have it open here, and then I can just drag it off the window, or I can say extract to a location. I always like to extract it and put it next to the compressed file because it puts everything right next to each other. Now, I have my handheld connected on drive H and if you look, you'll also notice that it has on the file the model number of the system and a share folder. Both of those folders you're gonna wanna delete. So I selected both of them, I hit delete. Now I'm gonna go to the software that I decompressed I'm gonna double click it open, and you're gonna see those same two file folders, the share folder and the 30003 folder. From there, I'm gonna copy them, drag and drop. You can copy by hitting Control C on your keyboard and Control V to paste, but you're gonna to wanna to transfer the files over to the handheld drive and allow it to load. Once the file loads, we can close the two files, we go to our handheld, we'll hit our OK button, the whole main window is going to reflash to the main menu, then we're going to go into display setup, and we're going to find the option in the bottom of display setup on the handheld called handheld software reboot. It's going to have a state of hide to the right of it, so highlight it, click right so it says show, Hit the OK button, and it'll take you back to the main menu. You then go to the bottom, hit the handheld software reboot folder, open that, there's a single file in there, select that file, it asks you if you want to load that version. You're going to get a black screen that is loading. 
Once the load finishes, it'll go succeed and reboot to the main menu. At that point in time, your handheld is at the latest version of software. So now that we have the latest version of software in the handheld, we need to connect the handheld back to the ECU and update the ECU. Take the handheld back to the vehicle. We got the engine stand right here. We're gonna take our handheld. We got our cord that plugs into the ECU. We're gonna plug it in. And on the handheld, it's gonna boot up. We want a key on on the vehicle. And in the handheld, we're gonna wanna go to display setup from the main menu. Scroll down until we find the option ECU programmer. The state is gonna be hidden, so we wanna click left or right so it says show. Now that it says show, we're gonna to go to the bottom of the main menu, to ECU programmer. We're gonna select that file. There's a single file option there, and we're gonna select that file and we're gonna load it. At this point in time, do not touch a thing. Don't touch the cord. Allow the file to completely load. Once it finishes loading, it's gonna have a count succeeder one and it's just gonna be done. At that point, we'll key off, wait 30 seconds, disconnect the handheld. We could plug it back in right away. It doesn't matter, we're just rebooting the handheld. And after that time has passed, the ECU is completely reverted back to a complete stock state, like the unit came out of the box, but running the latest version of software. So that, at that point, you're ready to go to your initial setup section of the handheld, plug in your base parameters, and you can fire up the engine and start your tuning and start your driving. So that concludes on how to update the software on one of the throttle body EFI systems. When it comes to an LS system or one of the port injection systems, the process is effectively the same. I hope that answers any questions you have about updating the software. If you have any questions, refer to our Do You Need a Software Update video also posted, or you can also contact our tech support line and they can help you uh, see if you need to get a software update as well. If you have any additional questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment them down below. Also check out all of our other videos that cover a wide range of topics that may help you with your tuning or troubleshooting or getting you started with one of the Phytech EFI systems.